Hello, hello, hello everyone. I'm Dasha Jenison and we are going live on our Red Rock account. And today we have very special guest, one and only Tony Alain. And he's gonna show us around his studio and uh, draw giveaway winner for our program. Hello and how are you? Hi everyone, can you hear me okay? Can you see me okay? So at the end of our live, we're gonna announce giveaway winner. And let me show you. Let me show you poster for our Red Rock show. So this is beautiful work by Tony Alain and he is uh, serving as a judge. Okay, he is uh, He's checking in right now, so just let me see. Can I connect him? Hi, Tamami. Hi, Varsha. And if you didn't um, book yourself yet, we have another Tony Lane workshop, but it's very new concept. It's land and sea and it's all new challenges all new reference photos and it's on may 22nd hello varsha sent you your giveaway prize and uh, hope you received it uh, today we draw a winner for our facebook giveaway and we posted it online so at the end of our live today we're gonna draw giveaway winner for our instagram giveaway and we have all these names right here so you cannot see it because i'm using filter not in my studio so light is very different so okay tony is here not more me talking pizza pasta tony hi tony how are you i'm good hi dasha Hi, I'll have to switch camera a little bit. Okay. Hi, everyone. Oh, I, I'm in the dark here. <laughs> you are? I think I better, I'll just get back a bit. I'll get under the light. How are you right. doing, Tony? That's a little bit better. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you oh, see absolutely. me? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hello again. Hello again. So Great. a lot of hearts here. Everybody is excited to see you. Thank you for doing this live today. So it's and, a pleasure. And we have uh, something special what we're going to do at the end. So today is very short, just like 30 minutes to touch up on everything what we're doing here in the Red Rock. And we're going to draw a giveaway winner by the end of our show. So... Okay. We already looked around your studio, but is there any way you can show how is your setup changing? Can you show? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's not an awful lot that I've tidied it. That's, a, that's one of the main things. I have, I've had a little tidy up, but I can show you. I can, I can uh, swing the camera around and give you a little guided tour again. Um, uh, and, you're still you in and you're still in Scotland, right? I'm still in Scotland, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. The weather uh, uh, we're sort of going into summer now, so so the weather's it's becoming quite nice. And there's plenty of blue sky around. But having said that, it, we had a huge downpour of hail and rain uh, earlier today. But hey, that's Scotland, you know. That's why it, it it's very green up here in the summertime, um, probably because of all the water. Um, okay, so uh, for those of you who um, who haven't been into my studio. Um, you must come, by the way, you must come to my studio in a couple of weeks' time because we're going to do a, a workshop, a one-day yeah. workshop. And we always have fun. It's always great fun. Um, it's, it's not hard work, but it's um, a little bit of challenge here and there. But it is great fun. Get in touch with Dasha. She's a wonderful, wonderful lady. She'll sort you out. Uh, so here's my studio. Thank um, you, let, let, let me just sort of scroll down. So these are my, uh, this is all my, this is all my pastels here. Um, so I keep them on this. I'll, I'll just push that back a bit. I keep them Hi, on, this, on this um, 
homemade trolley, this pastel cart, basically. You can see it's a double-decker thing. Yeah. And they're, they're sort of colour-coded. They're all different varieties and different brands. Um, we've got Unison, we've got Ludwigs, we've got um, Mount Visions. Oh, my um, gosh. Treasure uh, chest right there. Uh, we got all sorts of stuff there. Um, and then there's a few... I've got a few... Oh, turn around. I've got another pastel station here as well, right next to me. So this is pastel station number two. Um, <laughs> again, uh, uh, it's just like an overflow thing. Uh, and here, maybe you can just see, there's another box here, a, a tray, and this is pastel station number three. Um, oh, wow. So, what, you know, a guy should never be short of pastels. That's what I'm saying. No, no, no. We don't want you to be short of anything. No, it's very important. Um, and then... Uh, and then, of course, I got my main. Let me just pull this back a bit so we can. We say I got my main easel here, uh, and I've got another easel where I do my sketching and and uh, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and um, over here, I mean, there's a TV up there, but I don't I don't watch the TV. That's just for for uh, showing reference photographs when in the workshop. Uh, and over here, we've got um, racking for. Finished paintings, they're all finished and they're all wrapped in glassine and they're all mounted onto uh, acid-free board and what have you. There's some more racking there, uh, paper storage. And, and I just go Hello, around once more. Uh, and here, there's a, a huge big rack that I've built. This is for finished work. Um, and that's framed where, waiting to go to galleries. And if I turn and swivel around here, I've got sort of a, an office. If I, 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 I've sort of got a, like an office uh, counter here where I can um, contemplate my next painting and think about things. I've got my computer there and over here my little book, library books and, and what have you. And, um, and up there, somewhere up there, there is a whole bunch of, up there, a whole bunch of... Um, Travel cases. Boxes. Yeah, yeah, but, well, pastel boxes and what have you and um, some we've got oils in and there's a, a couple of Oh, and I've got a whole bunch of portable easels. They're spread all over the place. I've got one, two, three, four. I, I'm sort of an easel holic, so I, I collect easels for some strange reason um, because I like them and I need them. Uh, so that's really my studio. It's got, and, and it's um, nice and cozy. It's underneath the house. It's a three, it's a, basically it's a three car garage that I've converted. It's, uh, it's in two, it's in, basically it's separated into two studios uh, this is my main painting studio of course this is where you know if i'm not out painting i'm in here painting and the other side i've built a wall and there's a door there the other side of this uh, studio and the other half of the garage is my framing studio that's where i do all my framing um maybe i can just i just take you around there and show you that'll be a bit of, we haven't seen that so that'll be a bit of fun um let me just Here we are. We're back I think we're back. We're all back. So, Thank you um, for a tour yeah, and we're go going to my... the place where yeah. we've never been right now. <laughs> so this is my other... So I've got all my moulding up here uh, and it's all bare moulding. So basically it comes in as... Un... Where's the camera? Unfinished moulding. And I put it all together on this big machine here, which is a guillotine. And uh, where's the... Oh, here we are. This is the guillotine, and it's a big, heavy machine. It's got blades, very sharp blades here, and, and a treadle thing, and a pedal, and a clunch. And that, look, there's all the bits and pieces that fall off. And so that's my, this is my framing studio, and because um, uh, I do all my own framing. So here we are. We're back into the main studio now. Um, that's the end of the tour. Not much of a tour, really, but uh, that's why I don't charge. It's a free tour, so... <laughs> It's okay, because as I say, not much to see. So here we are. We're back. Well, we have a studio. Thank you. Thank you for this amazing tour. And I see a question popping up. So oh. how long did it took to settle in your signature Tony Lane style? How long did it take? Yeah. Oh. Um, take. Thank you for correcting. Well, I think it probably took... Um, 52 years. Well, I've been painting for 
over 50 years. So, uh, um, it, you know, it, it, I was a watercolor painter before I, I, I uh, uh, before I moved on to oils and, and then finally pastels, of course. Um, and I became a signature member of the Pastel Society of America. Um, I think it was about eight years ago, eight, 10 years ago, something like that, 20, 2012, I think. Um, but I'm a member of the Red Rocks Pastel Society, of course. Of course. Um, um, a very avid member of the Red Rocks Pastel Society, a member of the Pastel Society in London, in the UK. Um, it's just, uh, the, the one in London is a very small society. There's only about 60 members, 65 members worldwide. Um, and we have uh, a couple of exhibitions a year in London. And um, I'm a member of, of a few other pastel societies, the Arizona Association of Pastel Artists. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a master pastelist for the PANS, Pastel Artists of New Zealand, where I lived for 10 years, of course. Um, and I, and I became a master pastelist. So I built my, you know, I worked my way up the rung, up the ladder from, from, a, from a humble associate member uh, through to um, the various stages and ended up at, at, at the top of the pastel and masters. So there's, there's about half a dozen of us masters of the, of the PANS group. Um, and uh, you helped uh, Freemans to start it, right? Uh, that's very... You help uh, to start that pastel society when you was living in New Zealand, right? Y yes, yes, absolutely, yes. So that that's really cool. So for people who not belong to any pastel societies and thinking about should they join pastel group, what benefits, Tony, of joining many groups and what benefits of joining Red Rock? Well. Uh, I mean, obviously, the benefits, obviously, is because you then start to to meet socially, even if it's online, other members and other pastelists, other people, other like minded people. Um, and of course, um, the, the other important thing is, is that um, uh, you gain access to exhibitions, uh, group exhibitions, uh, society exhibitions. Um, you then can get into workshops uh, run by uh, uh, members. Uh, you can then, I guess, if you, you can then run your own workshops uh, and offer that to members. Um, but I think the important thing is, uh, is that um, it is, um, it is really, really good to belong to a, a society because it really opens up your mind and see, and you get to see and hear what other pastelists are doing and, and painting. And you know, and how they operate, and and all the little tips and, and advice that you can pick up and pass on to other people. So it, I think it's a good thing, you know, to be if you're if you're a pastelist and you're and you're not a member of any group or society, it can be a, a quite a lonely occupation. You know, you could be stuck in your in your studio, you could be out painting uh, plein air uh, and have no contact with other like-minded people. So I, I do suggest that that if you're a non-member of any of the groups, just get in touch, you know, just, hey, it's only like 50 bucks a year or something. So, so get in touch uh, and make, make a move and join a society, join the Red Rocks. Fabulous, fabulous group. You know, we, we're a great bunch of guys. So, well, thank you for that feedback and your insight on pastel societies. Uh, there is never too many, but it's about networking. So the more your group you belong to, you can get access to the people uh, from all over the world. Yeah. And last year, I remember when we was just starting these interviews, you came in, like you kindly agreed to do this interview a year ago. And during life, you're like, oh, I like what you guys doing. Let me become a member. Uh, and yeah. uh, look where we are again. So like, guys, if you... Don't remember this interview if you weren't following us. It's on our Instagram TV. If you scroll way down, there will be a poster saying, please meet Tony Elaine. And it was our very first meeting, like very first time we talked to each other and you show us studio. I answer, I ask you all the questions about pastel, what I have. And I may have a few more questions right here from our oh. members. So. Tamami, she attended one of your workshops. Hi, Tamami. Hello. Hiya. 
Hi, Chamami. She, she's in Reno. So question is, what, what is the reason you use charcoal instead of black or dark pastel? Ah, now, uh, this is only, this is a recent thing for me. Uh, um, I, I, let me just get them. I'll just show you what they are, of course. Um, I, I recently bought, um, I, I wanted to have some, uh, I wanted to have some really dark sticks of charcoal. I don't normally do an under drawing or a map out drawing, but what I do like to do, I like to, I like to, to establish my darks first of all, my dark values. And I wanted to find um, a good, uh, um, affordable stick of charcoal. And, and I came up with these, with these, I don't know if you can see them. I'll just take one out. They're a bit, these little square uh, um, past, charcoal pastels, they're called, they're called, and they're made by Inscribe or Inscribe. So they're, they're very reasonably priced. I got them from Amazon, don't tell anybody. Um, but uh, as I say, they're only Not like, sponsored by Amazon. No, no, no. They're only about six or seven pounds for a box of, what, 12 of these, these, these um, charcoal pastels. And they're sort of semi-hard. And they're really nice for me. I, I get on well with them. You know, if I'm going to, to put in like an, a, like a, an underpainting, uh, um, uh, uh, and block in my darks. I use those semi-hard charcoal pastels. Uh, they're quite big. They're robust. Um, and the other thing is, of course, is that you can put layers of lighter values on top, and they don't they don't smudge and they don't they don't mix and and so they're, they're to me they're a good base color for for establishing my darks. But are they they your you're just establishing your darks with it. They not your yeah. darkest dark, right? No, no. What they, would you? What What would you go for for your darkest darks? Okay, then? my darkest darks. I tend to not use a black. Okay. Although those those are black to start off with, of course. Yes. But what What I do tend to do uh, when I paint uh, and establish my darker values in soft pastel, I I try to have either a warm dark or a cool dark so i will use probably something like a prussian blue and then maybe just a hint of uh, a deep the, these little terry ludwigs a, a deep deep red uh, or terracotta and just float that on top of the prussian blue and that gives me quite a nice warm dark um, mm -hmm. you could I, I, maybe you can see it in, in this image behind me here um, it's, it's quite a warm dark here. If I get a, little, a wee bit closer, maybe, um, hopefully you can see, you know, it's not black uh, and there's hints of red and there's hints of purple in there. And so um, values, of course, are the, uh, are the important ingredients of every painting. You know, to me, they're, they're the number one importance. If you set your values and pitch your values correctly, um, they they will look dark, and of course, with the lights, you can see the light values next to the dark. It makes it look dark. So if you paint a light next to a dark, it makes the dark look darker, and and vice versa. If you paint a dark next to a light, it makes the the lighter values lighter. So so I don't use I don't use black as a finished color. I use yeah, it. I use black charcoal just as to, just to establish my darks first of all just to see where they're going to go. I hope that answers the question. Yes, thank you so much, Tony. Um, let's talk about our upcoming show and you serving as a judge of mm. the board. So yeah. any insight? Because there is like five days to enter. A lot of people still didn't put their entries in. A lot of them did. So those are ahead and some waiting for the last moment, like midnight uh, yes. over fifth. I mean, I'm among those folks usually. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's getting very close. It's how many days away? It may only be one week away before, before the exhibition closes. And then, and then that's where I step in, of course. Um, and I think um, I'm judge and I'm yeah. going to judge the work. Yeah. I think we have Karen Magulis. She's been head juror, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, she's a senior juror. And there is a team of jurors, actually, because 
uh, yes. we want to show your work to more than one person, even yeah. the greatest person. So it makes a group. That's right. And yeah. we have uh, Corey Pitkin and Lana Ballad as a three great tours. artists. I know, like. I don't know how did we got so lucky to get all of them to jury well, our show and you as a judge. So I just yeah. amazing. Well, I mean, I'm looking forward to to seeing what the what the three guys, what the you know what the three jurors have, have selected, and and then of course then the difficult my difficult task then is to is to find who's going to uh, who's going to win the sixty four million dollars. <laughs> Oh, I, I better go work uh, with <laughs> more sponsors, you know, like we have few, but I, for $64 million, I have to leave this live yeah. stream and yeah. no, but bring some more value to the table. Um, thankfully, over the last, I guess over the last three or four years, um, I've had the honor and the pleasure of being a judge and juror on, on many uh, uh, shows. Um, I'm, I'm, not only am I being the judge in the in the Red Rocks, <coughs> excuse me, the Red Rocks uh, show next week, uh, but uh, following that, I think I'm I'm judge for the U Art uh, uh, competition, and I've just done the Dakota Arts and the Pasta 100. So I, I I've managed to over the years to see an awful lot of work and um, and get a lot of experience about judging and 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 how to and. And, and it's helping me as well. So, and I love looking at art. Uh, and um, bear in mind, I am purely a landscape painter, but my judging doesn't just end at landscape. You know, I I, I, I get a big buzz from seeing portraiture uh, and wildlife uh, images and and semi abstract and uh, abstract. It actually, I'm I'm a little bit frightened of full abstract, but uh, I, I'll give it a go. But um, all the styles and genres um, I'm now getting, uh, I get excited when, when I get to judge. So it's really nice. And it's really nice to see because I see, um, I finally end up, obviously at the end of the competition, I get to see who's won by the name. Uh, obviously I don't, I don't know who the artist is when I'm judging, but it's nice to see that um, uh, artists, names that come out and say, Oh my God, I've seen their work before, you know, this is really nice. So you get to know the people and you see how they've, how they've, um, uh, how they've, they've sort of matured over the years. So it's great fun. I, I enjoy it. I, I really love it. And I, and of course there are disappointments, you know, I've been disappointed several times in, in, the, in the last year in, in, in competitions, but Hey, that's the nature of painting. You know, it, it's, um, it's uh, you feel a little disappointed that you oh my god that was my best painting and it didn't get anywhere but what it does do of course it just teaches you to say hey listen you know just just take a look and and pick yourself up and just keep going forward just just let your creative voice come out thank you tony yes and uh, speaking about voices tamami is saying uh I'm fighting my inner voice. I'm not good enough. So what would you advise for people who are fighting their inner voice, who are thinking they're not good enough? I shouldn't even try. Like, Well, mm, well, I, I, that, that's, I, I don't think that Tamami shouldn't think that way, first of all, because um, we all... All of us, no matter who we are, at one stage in our in our painting day or week, we're going to make a mess of things. And it happened to me the other day. I, I painted four times. I tried to paint this particular painting, and it just fell apart. But I didn't give up hope. I just simply stood back, and I felt, and I looked at the, I looked at my mistakes, and I could see and analyze where I was going wrong. And so I tried again, and it, it took me four times. Uh, to get the painting the way I felt it was it was good enough to to even think about putting in a frame so um, and and the other thing I think is really really important is um, is practice um, I'm a firm believer by the way in in now and again painting a reject if you know what I'm saying so, and you must realize that you painted a reject so that you can 
look and analyze and assess where you went wrong and then just try and do it again. Um, you know, painting, uh, uh, you know, the, it, it's, it's a life, for me, it's a lifetime work, you know, it, it's, uh, we're, we're learning all the time. Um, and I remember reading somewhere the famous Auguste Renoir, the French Impressionist, at the age of 94, I think he was, sitting in his wheelchair painting a plein air of his garden and he he had an assistant who helped him with his brushes because his hands were yeah. all, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, gnarled up with, with arthritis. And he painted a, this picture and he said, I think at the age of 94, he said, well, my friend, he said to his assistant, I think I learned something today as an artist. You know, this yeah, is the so great cool. Renoir for crying out loud, you know, uh, um, who who at that age, at the end of his life, was still struggling uh, and challenging himself. So whoever you are, don't give up. Just keep going forward. Um, it, it's all the learning process, you know. When I was a watercolorist all those years ago, I probably went through several trees worth of paper um, trying, to, trying to find my, my inner voice and my story. And, and, and I struggled and struggled, but I never gave up. I, I, I continued. It was my passion. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't give up that easy. I'm, I'm not a loser. So I, I then continued and continued. And um, thankfully, it sort of pays off in the end. You know, you get one or two paintings right and you think, you know, I mean, to be fair, I've probably um, in the last 12 months or so, I've probably only been happy with about half a dozen of my paintings. They've really, you know, they're, they're, and I paint every day. So there's an awful lot of, there's an awful lot of paper being used in here. But I have to say that, you know, probably only about half a dozen, that I really think, wow, I did something good today. Um, and so, so it's always, um, it's always wise just to keep practicing and forging ahead. You know, it is like, a, you know, it's like swimming through treacle at times, you know. But you, you've got to keep, you know, you know what treacle is, molasses, you know, all that sticky stuff. Yeah. Um, and it, it is like swimming through treacle. Uh, but you do, don't worry. It, you, one of these days, and it happened to me, I think, wow, and it happened to me, well, it happened to me with this painting. I thought, wow, it worked. You know, I painted a picture today and this fantastic. Yeah. And, and, I, and I was very happy that day. But I mean, you know, that, it doesn't happen every day, of course. So keep at it. Thank you, Tony. And... Uh... And saying great experience, fantastic interview. And Julia has a question. Tony, do you have to spend some time sketching and living in the environment before painting? She's asking because she finds difficult when in a workshop to paint something with what she's not familiar. And I know it's a trick question and here's perfect way to answer. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm going to go back to this almost the same answer again. Is the fact that that um, we're all I mean we're all comfortable with painting our own our own uh, specific subjects. You know, I, I'm a landscape artist. I'm, I'm a pure purely a landscape painter. That's why I became a painter. Um, but if I was set a challenge in a workshop to paint um, wildlife, um, I would perhaps think, oh my God, this is going to be a bit tricky for me. But it wouldn't stop me uh, uh, um, uh, attempting to paint uh, um, animals or even portraiture, because what I what I would tend to do, and, and this is a little bit of advice, I guess, from from a, from a landscape painter who's a fairly loose impressionistic painter, is that if you're going to every subject, uh, uh, I think if you can get your head around the fact that you treat it in the same way and look at your subject, whether it be uh, uh, um, a horse or a portrait or uh, a landscape, <coughs> excuse me, you just look at it as shapes and values. And if you can get your head around the fact that I'm just going to paint the shapes and the values that I see, you might get somewhere, you know, you, you might think, hey, this is quite enjoyable. You know? um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I, I did do some portrait work many years ago and um, and I used to and I painted from photographs not from life because I'm not that good um, and I and the photograph I would turn upside down and put next to my easel 
And then That's that smart. way I could then paint the shapes that I saw. And the That's, very That's very clever. So yeah, yeah. So that's a little bit of advice, you know, it, it is, um, uh, of course, practice, practice, practice. Uh, you know, I've come across uh, some incredible te new technology recently. Um, you know, in this day and age, um, in, you know, with, with, with all the, um, you know, the electronic equipment and the software that you can buy to help you create um, a painting. Uh, I mean, there's all sorts of mechanical aids, but, but uh, and they can be quite expensive. Uh, so, but don't be put off because I've I've found uh, a very very good, fairly a fairly cheap uh, piece of technology that I've been starting to use these days, and um, you know in the right hands it it can be uh, really enlightening, um, and you won't believe it, but it's a pencil, and so this is the technology I think that should be taking over now is is a pencil and it's very cheap it's very affordable uh it's very very uh, uh creative because the user the end user uh can do all sorts of magic tricks with a pencil and and if you use a pencil as much as you use your texting and your messenger if you use your pencil as much as you do your messenger you'll be amazed that a pencil and a sketchbook, you know, on a daily basis. The technology is quite amazing. And it's been around for some time, you know, this, this new technology. So give it a go. That's what I say. Give it a go. It's practice, practice, practice all the time. Thank you, Tony. And before we all go practicing, can you tell, please, <laughs> a few words about upcoming workshops? So this is like very new and we're going to do it just for the second time and it will be even much different from the first one, land and sea. Like, how did we come up with this idea and what, is, what it is about? Land well, and sea workshop on May 22nd. Well, land and sea. Well, I think this is be land and sea part two because we did a part one some, some weeks ago, a month or two, a month or so ago. Yes. And, um, you know, we, we've always... Uh, a lot of people who come to my workshop say to me, how on earth do I paint water? I, I have a big problem painting water. Ah, and I thought to myself, well, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, it's all around. I mean, two thirds, three quarters of, the, of our world is covered by, by the ocean. So, so the water uh, and the ocean and the sea is, is a big part of the human race, um, as is the landscape that we all live in. Um, and we see every day, of course. Um, and I thought, now water, now, of course, the ocean, well, it takes on, honestly, it takes on so many different guises, you know, I mean, you've got storm seas, you've got calm seas, you've got sunset seas, you've got reflections, you've got grey water. So many you've subjects. Got... I'm sorry? So many subjects to cover so under many the subjects. worst I know. sea. And, yeah. and, and so, and then of course, then you can add you know, boats and marine subjects. Uh, and uh, not everybody, of course, lives next to the water. But uh, but uh, we, we will all get access at some stage in our life to either go to the seaside, to the ocean, or to a lake, or to a river. Um, and so I thought now, um, every, and I paint it, I, I, I'm traditionally a marine painter anyway, you know, I paint landscape, but I, I, I was brought up on a small island, so I was always surrounded by water. And, and I always painted uh, um, painted the, the coastline, excuse me. Um, and so I thought to myself, now this will be a good subject for a workshop uh, because a lot of people, uh, a lot of people have, uh, um, uh, I mean, if you're gonna paint a, a chicken or a duck or a horse, you can find those images anywhere. That's right. But I mean, you know, to find a stormy sea, uh, you've got to go out, listen, the great Mr. Turner strapped himself to a, to a mast of a ship to experience a, a snowstorm at sea. And he painted it, you know, and he painted all this swirly stuff. Not um, from life, not while well, he was it, No, up. he didn't no. paint it live. He <laughs> okay. just okay, literally, just it's, sure. it's... He, he strapped himself to the mast of a ship because he wanted to experience what it was like in a force eight gale storm. And, and then when he got back to his studio, he painted this big dramatic snowstorm. Uh, at sea, it was called snowstorm at sea, you know, but, uh, 
Uh, and so, uh, you know, we all experience these things. So, so let's have a go at painting them. And, and the, you know, the, the, the water is moving. It's a fluid, it's a fluid medium. Uh, uh, um, uh, unlike a, a landscape, which is fairly static, you know, mountains are not going to move and sway around no. in, the, in the wind. Uh, but of course, the water hope not, will. Hope, hope not. <laughs> and so, <laughs> uh, and so there are, you know, it's all. Now listen, it's all to do with observation as well. You know? Yes. And if you go down, if you happened or chance to live by the sea or by the ocean, just go down and look at the wave. Just watch the waves come in, study them, and see how they how they crash onto the beach. And look at them and say, now, how am I going to paint this? So you have to keep looking at each wave as it comes in and analyze everything. You know, painting is all about observation. And how it's... did we add land part to it? Land part. How how are you going to cover land part? Well, Please... well, listen, we all live in various landscapes throughout the world. You know, I live now I live in Scotland. I've got the choice of mountains and, and open fields and, and cityscapes. Um, when I was up in Monument Valley last year, <coughs> excuse me, I was in, you know, a, a sort of a desert setting with hardly any foliage, any, any vegetation, big, massive, big, giant slabs of rock. You know, we all live in, in, in different areas and we all experience different landscapes uh, from, from high desert to, to uh, um, English pastoral scenes, you know. Uh, and so, again, the landscape can offer an awful lot. Now, I've had the, uh, the, the opportunity, I guess, through my teaching and through, through uh, traveling uh, and doing workshops overseas, that I've managed to, to see various landscapes and various, you know, I've been to China, I've been to Australia, I lived in New Zealand, I've been to many parts of the States. And, and so, I, and, and of course, I lived in a tiny little island without a single mountain. So I've seen lots of different landscapes and I've experienced them. And, and I, I guess you guys, you know, when you go to a new, a new location, uh, I get a big buzz, you know, I got to get my sketchbook out and, and, and my new technology, you know, the pencil, I got to get the sketch out and I've got to sketch and I've got to, I've got to record what I see. Uh, and, um, you know, that's why I keep, all the sketchbooks there so that so that I can bring those memories back home with me and they stay there as physical uh, uh, drawings and sketches I can look I can put them on the I can put them on my on my other easel here and and use that as reference uh, f for these sort of things and then I can do it you know is another one it's, it's all there so all of these things help me to produce a painting like this um, and so uh, and so the landscape, we all live in the landscape. We don't all live by the ocean, but we all live in, in a landscape, whether it be a cityscape um, or, or a desertscape. There's always something to see, paint and learn from. And um, I guess that's where I come in. I try to, uh, I try to again, help uh, the student who come to my workshops uh, just to see shapes and, and patterns and values and color. Uh, and also to to uh, see mood and atmosphere um, and help them bring out their story they need to bring out what they see you know i think an artist needs to needs to needs to take in what they see around their world what they see in their world they need to take in so that they they can then produce it and show it and share it with others and uh, and that's what i try to 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 help people do uh, not to pay my paintings or my landscape to paint their landscape in the way they see it so. and some amazing work was produced in your workshop so always blown away by how talented our artists are for coming to study with you wow. so it's it's always like exchange of creative experience we still have few seats left guys um for may 22nd but not for long so i'm gonna put link in our bio if you're interested, or just send me a direct message and I will set you up. Um, and now what we've been waiting for besides Tony, it's a giveaway <sighs> part. So wow. let, me, let me tell you how we done it. So it was threefold giveaway. People had opportunity to share, post, and comment. So yesterday I spent time with an other magic tool called Pen. And I wrote down 
all the names here <laughs> who because I couldn't use randomizer. It was too many conditions and you all guys amazing, you all did that. So I have 27 cards here and each card has other names written on it. So first part, Tony, you need to pick number from one to 27. You can pick yourself or you can ask somebody from the audience whom you see watching us to pick it. So whom we're gonna blame? So one from 27. Well, I think, um, um, I, I, how, many, how many are we going to pick, first of all? Uh, we're going we're gonna to pick one big winner, and uh, no, we'll go from there, okay? Okay, oh, okay. one to 27. Well, mm -hmm. um, I've always fancied the number 16. That was quite a nice, you know, I remember when I was 16, so 16 sounds like a good number. Okay, so 15? Let me find the card number 16. Of course, they're not in order. Of course not. That, of course not. That would be silly if they were in order. Okay, number 16. And coincidentally, so, okay, here number 16. And yeah. coincidentally, it has 16 names on it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah. uh, 16 names. Uh, you need to pick one. And the lucky winner will get membership to Red Rock for 2021 or 2022, if you're already a member, and set of beautiful terraces in blue, what will be perfect for upcoming workshop. So, one from the 16. Um, well, what about unlucky seven? Unlucky seven, okay, I'm counting, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it is, Okay, drum roll. Lan <laughs> drum roll. Uh, Lana Art Painter. So that's the Instagram handle, Lana Art Painter. Um, I don't, I hope she's watching. I don't know, can I invite her in or no? So, uh, Lana. Well done, Lana. Lana Art Painter, Hudojnik, um, artist Svetlana Malachova. So I'm, she's not watching us, uh, uh. but I'm, I'm going to send, like, we're going to hang for another minute. And it's Lana Art Painter, Lucky 7 of Unlucky 16. So uh, thank you, everybody, for participating. And instead of drawing another winner right now, we're going to come up with idea for the our next giveaway and maybe draw something even more special. How about drawing for the next time? And we'll draw it, like, on 21st, the day after our award ceremony. What if we'll draw one ticket to Tony Lane's workshop? This one or the future? What about that? How are you looking at that? You choose. Okay, so we're gonna do next giveaway. Stay tuned, I'm gonna post soon. And guys, if you're not following Tony Lane, follow him on Instagram, Facebook. If you're not following Red Dog for some reason yet, please follow Red Dog, become a member. Uh, press like on this video, share with your friends, comment, so we know to do more Will's Life interviews, invite another amazing artist, and it's time to go practice with our high tech technology. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure I have one handy. I may have to go to a hardware store to be able, like, practice. I'm on a road, so that's, um, that's a good thing. Thank you, Tony, so much for doing this interview. We will be talking more soon. I'm going to send you all the information about our members, and uh, we're going to be looking for your selection. So till we see you next time. Stay well, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Thank you for watching us. Um, always a pleasure, and stay tuned for our announcements. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being amazing viewers. Stay safe and happy painting. Happy painting. Ah, happy May Day. Today is a May Day. Oh, and yes, of course it is, yes. Yes, and oh. tomorrow, tomorrow is Orthodox Easter. I'm so terrible with holidays. Like, for me, every day I can talk to Tony Allen is a holiday. So, yeah. like, uh, oh. but, but tomorrow is Orthodox Easter. Christos uh, Vaskines. Oh, and happy birthday, to, happy birthday to my pal Stan Sperlach as well, because he's born on May Day as well. So. Oh, well Stan Sperlach. Maybe he can talk to us. 
sometimes like well yeah he's a good he's a good guy here you can interview stan next time he's a really good guy to interview he's got plenty of stories well but we, we will ask him to talk about you so <laughs> <laughs> thanks okay. dasha Okay, so have a great Saturday. Happy Sunday. Happy Orthodox Easter. Um, yeah. See you guys soon. Thank you all for participating and stay tuned for more. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Tony. Bye -bye Always now. fantastic. Okay, thank you all guys for watching. And reminder to enter your paintings. You need to become a member. So if you're not a member yet and you enter, please become a member. It's very easy. And if you are interested in Tony Alain's workshop, what's coming up on Saturday, May 22nd and covers land and sea, send me direct message and we're also going to put link in bio. Thank you all for watching and see you soon. Um, go pastel. I'm quoting now uh, Pierre. Thank you, guys. Bye.